Yes, hello and welcome to the second tutorial of uh, 3D Studio Max. Uh, we will be building an actual architectural model today. Uh, first, I'll go a few. I'll go over a few basic stuff, and then we'll move to the to building uh, of to building of the actual model. So I'm just uh, repeating some of the previous stuff. Uh, Alt W to enlarge the screen and to go into any other screen. Uh, Middle mouse button for pan, middle mouse button and alt for rotation, scroll for zoom, control alt and middle mouse button for dynamic zoom. If you want to centralize an object, you select it, you press Z, it will centralize and rotate around that particular object. And uh, what else? Uh, yeah, this is it. Uh, one, one important stuff that people uh, get. Uh, when when they, when they start doing 3D Studio Max, uh, it makes trouble for them. Is the lock is by default assigned to the spacebar, and spacebar is a very big key. Uh, you often press it round accidentally. So like you see, if I press spacebar, this lock uh, appear with uh, like a golden outline, and now I cannot select anything else. I can only edit the object which is selected. All right, it's very useful in very uh, in larger scenes when you want to isolate uh, one object or a few objects, let's say. But uh, often beginners press uh, spacebar by accident and wonder why they cannot do anything, think that the program is crashed or something. So if you cannot do anything, first thing you check is this lock here. All right, because you might have pressed the spacebar by accident. Please, please uh, check it again. Uh, make sure that it's unlocked. All right. So, the first lesson of today after the lock, of course, is the snaps. So, we have many different types of snaps, like all CAD program, uh, let's say 3D programs. Uh, the hotkey for snap is S. If you press S, you see this tree with the, mag uh, with the magnet button it gets highlighted. Uh, yes. So, uh, while... Uh, you have many different snap options. I will start. I will start with the with the basic uh, grid point. So uh, first, let's cl clear all, all. Let's turn on the grid point. So now you see my uh, pointer only snaps to the grid while I'm while I'm moving it around. If I try to create a box, for example, two by two by two, uh, two units. Let's say we will get to the dimension of these units. So like uh, now I can have I can have it snap to the grid basically, and it goes for all the basic uh, standard geometries. Something else, uh, I advise you to go over all these basic geometries because I haven't covered all of them. It doesn't, I mean, it's not, uh, it's not a very proper tutorial. I say, okay, this is a pyramid. Now this is, we'll get to ticks. This is the T part. So you have to, uh, I have to go over and like play with this, see the different uh, modifying option of all these uh, uh, Objects they give you something to play with and something new to learn and also uh, Same goes for the extended primitive. These are also some more uh, Complicated objects for example, let's say the Hydra or the Taurus or uh, Those other kind of objects not always useful, but some of them are really sometimes uh, uh, Yes, all right, so continuing with the snaps uh, the second kind of snap I like to uh, mention, very useful, is the vertex. So let me get rid of the grid with the vertex. Uh, well, let's say let's say I want to move this uh, and I want to uh, bring this edge exactly here. In the previous lesson, we did eyeball it somewhat, but like that's not the best way. If you want to do it, uh, you can like uh, hover your mouse around the edge while this is selected, the vertex. And while the snap is on, so the small cross appears, and then the bigger cross, uh, the white one, for the move uh, command, let's say. Make sure that you press W, you are in move, not in rotation or scale on just Q or select mode. So now I can pick this and just put it here. I can select this object, pick this, and just put it here. Yes? So you can have, uh, you can move all these according to the vertexes and put them uh, together. Vertex very useful. Let me move them apart so I can move the second uh, with the other, with the other one. Uh, the other useful one is the edges. 
like uh, if you want to pick a point from the edge of this and just align it with this edge or you can align it with this edge uh, you can snap to the edges you can snap to the faces for example any part of this face you can pick and like start to put it into any part of any other face uh, well, you can align it with the face I'm not using this often because uh, the align option is a much better alternative to that often uh, the useful ones are the endpoint and mid midpoint. So, like, if, imagine if I have this and I want to get the midpoint of this and uh, just centralize it here on top of this uh, cubicle form. So I can do it. Like, imagine if I want to get this one, the middle edge of this, and put it in the middle of this one. Yeah. So I can align it easily with the midpoint and at the endpoint. Uh, so these are the good ones to know if you're later on when we will go to the drawing of the the line and the shapes we will get to more like some of these like perpendicular or the, or the other other parts uh, but for now uh, remember grid vertex says edge face endpoint and midpoint center face also useful like the name suggests is the center of the face yes so you can like pick the center of this face and put it in the center of any other face so these are <coughs> basic snap options Together, like going <coughs> parallel with the snap, what we have is the command align. Command align is a, a little bit tricky. Uh, like it offers you something that usually like uh, you might not get with the uh, snap sometimes. For example, let's say I have this object here. I know that it will reach here. I don't want to change any of the other uh, <coughs> Z or Y <coughs> axis. I just want to put it. Uh, I just want to align it with this object. So it, it worked with one or many. Let's say let's first see one. So I select this object. The align is here on top, or the, the hotkey for it I think is Alt and A. Yes, Alt and A. And then it asks you to pick an object as a source uh, uh, target object. So I'm picking this. Uh, let's see what was uh, for default. Uh, so you have many options here. You can have the center of the current object, which is the one that you selected. You can have the minimum, one side of it, maximum, the other side of it, center, or where the gizmo is, which at the moment is the same with the center. We will get how you can change that in the hierarchy in the hierarchies later on. So, uh, like for example, imagine if I want to have this face, I'll set minimum with the maximum, the other face of the other one. So I'll put it like this, minimum, maximum, and you have restrictions. So now I don't want to move it in the Y direction or in the Z direction. Uh, I, want to, I want to only move it in the X direction, yes? So I want it to move exactly in the X direction, perpendicular to this face, and attach here, uh, wherever these two meet. So I use the X, minimum, maximum. So like imagine, let, let me do the other one. So if I use the maximum of the current object, it gets the other side of it. And the maximum of the other object, which is the face closest to us, uh, let's say toward the X direction. Yes, so that's the positive. Uh, or let's say center, center. Center, center brings it all together. You can also play with this. Now I restricted the moment only to X position. If I put it for x and y direction, it will definitely centralize it exactly to the center of this object. Yeah, or let's say center minimum, center maximum. <coughs> so you have uh, you have many many different. Uh, it gets some working. It, it gets some practice to get used to how to adjust this. Usually, like I go with uh, x or y or z or all. With minimum and maximum, I don't usually use the center because it's in architecture. We usually try to align faces, basically. So I go with minimum, maximum. If you want to have some more control later on, you can use the pivot points as well. You can press OK, and you can have <coughs> alignment with uh, several objects. So let's say I have this. Now I have uh, this, 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 and this, and this. And I want to align them all with the teapot. So I press, uh, I keep it, uh, I pick it from here, mirror align. 
or I press uh, Alt A and then it asks me for the target object let's say this is the target object now you see it, it only moves them in this direction the Z remains uh, untouched if I press Z it will bring all, all of them in the same height if I press Y it will bring them basically all in the center if I press everything to center it will bring everything to the center of teapot let's go for the maximum and the minimum and let's say go only for the X position so I'm just basically aligning all this object with the back of the teapot I, I don't sometimes I don't get it all the time how they how they uh, define minimum and maximum so you have to play with it a little bit I don't even know sometimes sometimes I have to change it uh, I don't I d might be local I'm not sure but you have also a alignment orientation toward the local anyway very useful command when you have a bunch of objects especially when you're doing architectural model to know how to align different objects together all right so this was the the alignment what else there was something else with the aha uh -huh. so with the 3d snap uh, let me show you something else let's say you have this object you can do this both with align and with the 3d snap uh, but you also if you keep your if you uh, left click and keep it down on the 3d snap you see we have the 2.5 and 2d snap so I'm going for 2.5 I want to show you what what, uh, what is the difference so 2.5 imagine if I want to put uh, this edge over this edge but I don't want to change the z direction I don't want to change the height of this object so first I go I clear all I only select vertex uh, now uh, it doesn't work very well in the 3D. It works just fine, just like 3D snap in 3D. But the difference being, if I go now to the 2D view, go to the top, pick this, and put it here while it's in 2.5D, I go back. I see that this is now perfectly aligned without being, uh, without touching the height of the object. So 2.5, according to the viewport you can adjust you can adjust freely objects according to the snap uh, all snaps without being worried that the objects might jump uh, over or like under or back or forth yeah. also, <coughs> also very useful while doing architectural models so now let me get rid of all this uh, I'll, I'll show you like the second lesson today uh, we will have we will make a very a simple architectural model uh, with some basic geometries I go under uh, command tab create uh, standard primitive a box uh, let me open up my grid go to 3d snap I want to create a kind of a modular uh, building so for now just create something that looks uh, proportionally right let's say architecturally so imagine I have this module and I want to repeat it so I want to make one module and then I want to repeat this uh, like over and over two times uh, two times over now I have the box I want to empty the inside so the lesson for today is the pro boolean uh, so I go to the front press W uh, sorry R for scale make this a little bit smaller while keeping shift down because I want to make a copy so for copy keep the shift down one okay now I adjust it uh, the snap is on so make sure that you turn off the snap make sure that you can eyeball it here I don't I don't mind or you can go to the modify and just uh, set it in exactly uh, like one half meter 50 centimeter or something uh, it doesn't really matter for today we will get to more precise well how we can link it with AutoCAD and with other more precise uh, methods of uh, drawing all right so let's say I have this object I go to uh, under create tab I open this uh, go to under compound object there is this option called pro boolean 
ProBoolean is a very useful tool for doing uh, architectural modeling. By default, you can check. Uh, by default, it's on uh, the parameters is set on subtraction. This is what we want. We want to remove this uh, bigger cube from the smaller cube now. So this option called Start Picking, I click on it and I pick this one. And now this is empty. All right. So now let's say um, if I have a kind of a design here. So okay, I'm trying basically I'm trying to do uh, something more uh, architectural. Uh, let's go to standard. Let's go to a box. So we will sit back here a little bit. Yes. Let me make sure that it's uh, working properly. I go to snap to vertex cell. Let me make sure that it at least snaps to one side because we don't want to create a kind of messy uh, Snap is off. Make sure that the snap is on. Put it here. I should have used 2.5, but anyway. Uh, let's put this here. Let's make it white. I can change the color here. I'll show you how to do material later on. And now let's say we have a kind of, uh, I'll go to this. Uh, Let's say we have a kind of a design thing going on, kind of a special shading element. So I go to cylinder. First, when you're doing this kind of stuff, always make sure that you give it some topology. So increase the segments a little bit, because especially if later on you want to get it to Lumion or other render engines, it might create some difficulties for you. So let's have a cylinder. Let me make sure that this is large enough because we want to play with this a little bit. Now, I go here, keep shift down. I will try to create a kind of a pattern here. Let's say we have uh, three big ones. Okay. Uh, few smaller ones Okay, we'll get some time. I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying to create like the perfect. You can go over it and just do a little bit more. Uh, the, the purpose is just to show how it works. So now I want to create these holes. Uh, select object again. Under geometries, stand uh, compound object. Pro, pro boolean. Make sure it's on subtraction. Start picking. Remove, uh, get rid of this one. This one. This one. Mm, and just click on all of them. Yes, now let's say we have this uh, as a kind of part of our design. So we have other parts, uh, we have other kinds of uh, boolean. So let's say we have a box here, just as an example, and we have a spear here. So if I now go under compound object, pro boolean, if I change this from subtraction to intersection and start picking, it will keep the intersection of the two objects. Uh, basically, uh, you can create much, much. Uh, you can create many different uh, geometries only with boolean if you know how to subtract or if you have a good imagination, basically. And you have also union, which, which basically merges two objects together. Only while doing subtraction, 
is important that you pick uh, basically the object you want to remain first so if I want to keep this object and remove the sphere I pick this go to compound object pro boolean subtraction start picking yeah it will go away if you want to remove the cube from the sphere you have to pick the sphere first uh, sorry mm. first you have to go out of the command by going into the one of these movement options. Also, I keep I, I pick on the sphere. I go to Pro Boolean, start picking this one, and now this is removed from the sphere. So just basic, uh, just basic stuff related to the Boolean command. All right, now I want to have a window here and another window here and maybe a skylight. So here I go to the side, this one. Let me move this a little bit further back. Okay. Um, let's say standard primitive a box. Let's say we have something here. Let's make it one one for now i like this to be a kind of a cubicle form all right so i have this i want to create a window here there are prefabricated windows in 3d max i'll, sh I'll get to that later in architectural object but today's lesson is about Boolean. so <clears throat> i'm just using basic geometries to create some architectural form so i'll use the same so you can you, you see this uh cube here what you can do, uh, I'll keep this for boolean, but then I copy it because I want to create a frame. So I copy it once, I go to the top, make it a little bit smaller because it's basically a window frame. Maybe. Mm, for now, let's. Uh, give it a kind of a darker gray color because it will be a window frame and then uh, again press R shift down okay something like that pick this compound, compound object pro boolean start picking remove this part so now uh, if I want to create a kind of more detailed framing I can use the same uh, object basically I press uh, shift down and scale it down again let's say we want to have something like this Shift down, move it. This is fine now. Uh, now, if you want to merge these together, if you're sure about the, the output and you don't want to have too many objects, you can always select this again, go to Pro Boolean, use Union, start picking, add this one, and add the other one. Now I'll have the frame perfectly done. Okay, now I go again under standard plane because we need a glass here. I go here, turn my 3D on, vertices, I draw one from here to here. Go to modify, drop it down to 1 1. In your computer, it's probably E11. And let's change the color to something more for now. I'll show you the material later on. Now it's a double faced. Okay. Now, the, win the window is ready now. Uh, what you want to do, you want to put it in the proper place. So I press Alt W. I go here. Select the window. Uh, make sure your snap is off not to throw you off 
I want to I want to make something else as well. I want to give the window a frame to make it look a little bit more architecture. So again, I copy this out. Let's make it smaller. Shift down. I want a larger frame now. Okay. Select the inner one, make it bigger, move it a little bit further. Pick this one, go Pro Boolean, subtraction, start picking, remove this part. Let's give this a kind of a more whiter color because I also want to render something for you toward the end. Let's put it together with the building. Maybe this is a bit too much. Now, let's say we want to align it with this. So, uh, so the object is selected. Uh, I go to align. Pick this. Minimum, maximum, exposition. It will align it perfectly. So we don't have to be worried that we missed something here. If you zoom in, you'll see that they're aligned perfectly. So this is basically my window. So I have this. The window, the glass, the frame, and the everything. So I, I, I select it all, but also the building is selected. To subtract from the selection, you can keep Alt down. Control for addition, Alt for subtraction. And now I want to mirror this over here. You remember, mirror is here. Uh, I click on the mirror. Click on copy because I want to keep the original. I want it to be mirrored. Uh, along this uh, x direction so let's move it here nice okay now let's say we want to have a similar window as a skylight here so skylight uh, similar so I just keep the shift down I copy it first now we have to rotate it rotating it is a little bit tricky we can always group it but we will get to grouping later you have this second snap option this angle snap toggle so I'm turning this on press E for rotation I'll get the green line because I don't want to rotate it in any other direction I get the green line and you see while I'm rotating it has uh, five degree increments so I can perfectly stop on 90 degree without being worried that I over or under rotate stop. Uh, press W, Alt W, go to the side, make sure that it's on the proper, make sure that it's on the proper place. Don't change the Y direction. Let's keep it clean as much as possible. Of course, we can always turn on the snap and just snap it or align it. But I'm trying to be quick here, not to make you bored. Now, let's say the skyline is here behind this design part. All right, now, okay, everything's fine. Let me also give this a kind of a gray color, not bad. All right, so I pick this, go to subtraction, uh, pro for pro boolean, remove this one, remove this one, uh, remove this one. Now it's, we have a perfectly good uh, kind of module we can work with. I want, I want to add something else. I want to add a piece of glass here because this is not uh, enough. It's still very open. So what I do, I go to the side again. Here. I turn my 3D snap on. I draw a plane. Standard primitive. I draw, I draw a plane. Now, this plane, you go to modify. Imagine if you want to have uh, this plane as your uh, frame. I want to show you some modifiers as well. So, imagine if I want these lines to be, these segments to be my frame. Now, I go to the side. I have my plane. Let's go place the plane in the right place uh, from the top. S. 3D snaps off. 
Yes, it's a good place. Now, I don't want just a piece of glass. I also want to have a kind of a proper framing for this. So I copy this plane a little bit, move it, shift down for copy. And then under modify, you go to the modifier list. I advise you to go and uh, play with some of these because uh, they are very useful. I will cover like maybe 40% of all these by the end of semester. Some of them are more advanced for animation and stuff, but some of them are very useful architecture. The one that we are doing today very useful for architectural modeling. It's called LATIC. So you can find LATIC here or you can press L. Let's go. Uh, oh, it was. Okay, LATIC. <coughs> it will create a kind of a mesh, uh, space frame mesh around the edges of any geometries that you have. So you have some uh, you have some options here. I want to read. I want to reduce the uh, the dimension of this much 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 slower. Okay, this is good. Uh, segments are okay, and I want to reduce these uh, to give them a kind of more profile uh, window profile type. All right, so now this is very good. Uh, let's change the color of this to something more metallic. Uh, and let's change the color of this also to the to our uh, skyline uh, window. Okay, now this this looks pretty good now. Uh, so um, yeah, this this is our module. And then let's say I want to I want to go one step further. Uh, I want to have a kind of shading element here as well. So I'll go easily to the front. Just create a box. Uh, these two practices are designed to show you that you can create very good, uh, very uh, strong geometries or design ideas if you have uh, just by playing with basic geometries. Of course, we will get to more complex topologies later on. Let's say this is the a wooden shading element. I'll go to here. I'll just give it a kind of a more warmer color look. Let's say. I go to the front now, keep shift down, let's have 2, 3, 4, I don't want to cover everything, and even let guess, let's get rid of the last one, so I get these 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yes, okay. Now we have this. Uh, you can always play with this. Like for example, if you can, if you add a little bit imperfection, it will, it will, get, it will uh, make a huge difference in your design. It will make it much, much more uh, believable if it has some imperfections in it. Okay, now we have a very good uh, module. I select all of this. Uh, I want basically to mirror this uh, and have uh, a kind of full building. I'm not, I'm not bothering with the interiors today. Uh, we will get the interiors later. So mirror. Uh, this time we have to change it. I want to move along the y direction, as you can see. Keep a copy, okay, and then move it. Uh, basically, you can turn your snap on and just move it exactly to the right place. Let's Alt W. Let's see. Looks good. Uh, like for example, if you want to have a more complex shape, you can mirror this also again to the other direction if you want to. Uh, you absolutely can. Now let's say uh, I want to have a kind of a, the on top of this. It's not let's say it's not one story building. Let's say it has a staircase inside, which we will get to later on uh, on top of this. So let's move this uh, shift down. We go up, okay, S, let's put it on the proper place, let's go to the top view, where is top, it's here, so I want to have, uh, I, I want to have some changes in the, in the building, I don't want it to be exactly, uh, going up exactly, and I don't want this, uh, the window to look over the skylight, because it looks, uh, so let's say I turn this on and then I rotate it and I rotate it 
let's say we have a structure of system here somewhere in the middle and then it works uh, maybe not like this because then it works with it doesn't work with the shading element that we put already there let's say it's okay it works with the skyline okay we can also move it a little bit in and out if we want to make a little bit more interesting shape uh, let's say this one oh no we'll have to go to editable poly later on this will not work now uh, we will get to that as well this is next lesson I wish or it can be even today's lesson okay let me let me make sure everything's selected everything's selected uh, well, except for these two I don't want these two alt alt mm -hmm. the side shift down pick it up okay s down pick this put it to the right place and then put it back again s down like let's say design something okay looks good let's say this is our building might not be the most interesting building but it's something that we made only with the basic geometries i would like to rotate of course uh, let's say even if i if i could rotate some of these might not be structurally plausible but anyway let's have a, let's have let's have it rotate it looks better okay so this is for today's lesson basically uh we covered most of the stuff that i wanted let me go here create a under standard primitive create a plane always on the ground okay now i will show you how to make a good uh, like basic graph render out of this because this is part of your assignment for students in my class not the people who are watching uh, so i want to create an environment give it a kind of a uh, let's say let's say i want to get one of the perspective let's say i want to get this perspective yes so i'll i'll, de I'll get to the defining the camera later on uh, under create tab you can you also always have this basic we will get to lumion later on but just for today let's give it some uh, context uh, under architecture extended aec standard you have the foliage uh, and you have some of these trees let's have like uh, something and then we can uh, scale it down just to have something in the background shift down okay shift down okay these are not very useful okay this is this one also i want it to be somewhere maybe even here okay this is good uh, now if you press f8 f9 sorry if you press f9 it will render the the 3d for us not the most appealing render so you want to give it some shadow so let me go again a little bit uh, let me create a sky system so i told you last time again i'm repeating this because i prefer to have it over the semester than one lesson before the final you have the sky system under this create tab you have systems don't go for daylight uh, go for the don't go for the sunlight go for the daylight system press yes uh, you can adjust it perfectly you can also change this from standard to high quality so it, it shows you a draft of the shadows uh, I change this to manual Up. Uh, sorry I selected those that thing by accident Let's have some shadows. Okay. While this is selected again, go here, down, 
and check this sky uh, cast shadow I'm decreasing this uh, this will give you some sky light like let's say sky dome soft shadows around the corners so now let's say I'll get to cameras later it's just um, what I'm doing is not like the best way of uh, adjusting a scene for render but anyway for today's practice this is okay I'll try to get a little bit low so you get some of those uh, uh, goodness uh, good perspectives uh, now let's say again let's press F9 this time you'll notice that it gets some more uh, time to render out but you see the sky is very uh, sky is dark the environment is very dark uh, I'll show you how to fix that now uh, so press pause cancel I made a huge mistake I haven't saved this file uh, in a while so let's say classwork 2 so now for the environment you press 8 on the keyboard or you go to rendering environment just remember the hotkey 8 on the keyboard the color is now uh, black you can make it for today I'll, I'll show you how to assign pictures later on let's give it some hint of magenta just like the real styles or blue yes okay and always put this on automatic uh, at the beginning later we'll go to more advanced settings now let's try it again F9 let's see how it looks I mean I have to edit this out I suppose because it will take a long time to render a single shot I don't have the best computer in the world which is saying something uh, for people uh, as a person who's teaching computer courses okay so you can see this uh, final render looks okay uh, it was the entire lecture that I was going to give you in the class uh, this is being postponed uh, because of the coronavirus and we are trying to cover all these topics uh, online sorry that it's a little bit of a long video for the other people who might be listening anyway it's a three-hour class uh, I would have I would have done this in the class for like 45 minutes and then I, I would give them one hour, two hours to finish the same task. Uh, thank you very much. I'm expecting the 3ds Max file and one render. It doesn't to be uh, it doesn't have to look good and if you couldn't make the background or the other stuff, don't use the trees too much because they're too heavy and I regret it. I, I, I spent like I waited maybe seven minutes just for the for the render. Uh, thank you very much and I'll see you on the next lesson where we will be covering editable poly and the uh, rotation and advanced scaling and uh, modif some modifier list, more modifier list. Thank you very much. See you.